Today I am free. Manifesting through deep inner changes. By Richard Dot. Table of Contents. Chapter 1, Today I am free. Chapter 2, The Manifestation Buck Stops with You. Chapter 3, Manifestation in Progress. Chapter 4, How Interpersonal Relationships Affect Your Manifestations. Chapter 5, Can Other People's Thoughts Affect Our Manifestations? Chapter 6, Today I Am Free From The Opinions Of Others. Chapter 7, Every Encounter Is An Opportunity To Practice. Chapter 8, Manifesting Independently Of Others In Life. Chapter 9, Today I Am Free From Passing Judgments. Chapter 10, Today I Am Free From Guilt And Addictions. Chapter 11, Today I Am Free To Create. Chapter 1, Today I Am Free. I have been a worry word since young. I remember sitting in my dad's car and looking out of its window at a very young age, pondering over all the problems in my life at that time. Petty concerns and worries, which to a child, seemed like the world back then, who was going to be my friend in school. How was I perceived by my peers and teachers? Was I well liked? Will I do well? I remember one afternoon in particular, when I wondered when my life would finally be free of these problems. In my youthful innocence, I reasoned that these problems would probably stop after I leave school, when I would finally have nothing to worry about. Then I would be able to enjoy life itself. As I entered my teenage years and subsequent adulthood, the problems in my life did not just go away. Instead, they morphed into a different set of problems. I found myself worrying about money, about acceptance in society and about achieving something of significance in life. Different problems, but the same incessant worrying and mind chatter going on and on. In fact, it seemed like worrying was going to be the natural way of life for me. While growing up, I was taught the value of worrying by my mother, who was a worry word herself. She was always extolling the virtues of being prepared in advance, not realizing that in order to do so, she was running through half a dozen disaster scenarios in her mind each time. My mother was constantly on the lookout for the next thing that could go wrong so she could prevent it. And so, not having questioned these worrying thoughts for myself, I came to accept them as normal in my life. I came to accept all the incessant mind chatter that lived inside my head for several decades. I lived with them, worked with them and went to bed at night with them. The mind chatter kept me awake for many, many nights where my mind would just run through one possibility after another without realizing the truth behind all of them. The truth is that none of those thoughts were real. I would have continued to live this way if not for a few significant events in my life. First and broadly, I encountered these spiritual teachings which I would go on to write about in my books. The work of several authors, in particular Lester Levinson, creator of the Sedona Method, and Byron Kitty, the work, made me realize that our thoughts are not real. They are just our own projections onto the external world, which can then go on to create our external reality. Byron Kitty teaches that when one believes in their own thoughts, they suffer. This was certainly true for me all those years. I chose to believe in my own baseless negative worrying and fear thoughts. The end result was an extremely poor self-image and a very pessimistic view towards life. Hence the first step was for me to be free from my own thoughts. Second, as I frequently teach, is that it is not possible to stew in negative thoughts for long periods of time without having some form of unwanted physical manifestation. For me, 
those unwanted manifestations came in the form of major setbacks in life which resulted from years of negative thinking. Those painful setbacks forced me to finally sit up and take notice. They forced me to take a good look at my life and to examine all the possible causes. After I was done blaming all the external circumstances for my seeming misfortune, I realized that the only cause I had not thoroughly examined was the nature of my own thoughts. It was only after a few hard, terrible experiences that I realized I had to take full responsibility for my own personal development. I could not continue to engage in worrying critical and judgmental thoughts while hoping that positive things would happen to me on the outside. Of course, this is easier said than done and it took me several of years to do so. The second step thus was for me to be free from several negative behaviors and thought patterns. Third, I encountered the teachings of Abraham Hicks, Seth, Louise Hay, Neville and a whole host of wonderful inspirational teachers too many to list here, who teach that it is possible for us to create our own reality. Once I had overcome all my negative conditioning, I began to focus on creating a new desired reality following all the principles taught by these great teachers. What followed has been a period of flourishing in my life, where each year has been progressively better than the last. As they frequently say in the Silva Method, May the rest of your life be the best of your life. As I look back at all these teachings I encountered in my life, I realize that all of them have their unique place and value. All of them contributed to a piece of the spiritual puzzle for me, as they will for you. But the biggest piece of the puzzle was myself. This is often the most difficult piece for us to work with because we often do not have an objective view of ourselves. We are able to see and readily point out the flaws in others but we remain mostly invisible to ourselves. Until we work with this unseen portion of ourselves, until we bring our hidden beliefs and behaviors to light and work with them, our full potential will always be limited by what we cannot see. And so this sets the intention for the book which you are now holding in your hands. In my earlier books, I have focused on the importance of giving up your negative feelings of worry and fear. I have placed special and heavy emphasis on these two types of negative feelings because they are usually major obstacles to manifestation for most people. Once someone is able to give up their need to worry. Manifestations usually happen very quickly for them. In this book however, I move beyond worries and fear to talk about the importance of freeing yourself from the judgment and approval of others, and the need to judge or approve of others. You'll quickly discover, as I did, that when you free yourself of these destructive behaviors, your manifestations will flow even faster and more effectively than before. An individual compounds all the inner work which they have done as they give up more of their emotional baggage. When you reach a point where there is very little emotional baggage holding you back, you are finally free to create. This is when you can truly harness the full power of all the spiritual teachings which you have encountered. This is when you can truly create anything you want that you consider to be of value in your life. Until and unless you do the inner work necessary to create these deep inner changes, you will always be limited in terms of what you can manifest on the outside. This is not because someone is physically limiting your progress, but because you are limiting your own progress by engaging in certain destructive behaviors or thought patterns. I use the word destructive here to mean a destruction of your own desired manifestations without becoming free of the need to judge or to gain the approval of others, one cannot be truly free to create. It is my intention to guide you through powerful tips and techniques which will allow you to create from a truly free state. It is a surreal feeling to be writing these words today. Today I am free is a simple proclamation and four simple words in the English language.
Yet they mean so much to me. To go from a person who was once worrying around the clock, once worrying himself sick and worrying himself to insomnia. To being someone who has literally forgotten how to worry is a very liberating feeling. To go from someone who was constantly judgmental of others, who constantly criticized and sought the approval of others. To someone who is finally free from the judgment of others is an amazing feeling. When I realize that I am finally free, and that I have always been. I was filled with such intense unbridled joy that I had to walk up and down the length of my office just to shake off some of that excitement. The recognition of this truth still excites me today. Today I am free is a realization that you can choose to make at any time. Only you can choose whether you want to be free or otherwise. Your decision to be free is not based on any external circumstances. It is not based on the people around you or the events that are happening in your life. It is not based on your stage in life. There is no stage in life where you will automatically become free. Old age does not do it. Retirement does not do it. When the kids grow up does not do it. I am therefore happy to report that I was wrong back then. My fallacious thinking that I could only be free from my problems once I reached a particular stage in my life stemmed from my habit of ascribing my problems to external causes. Instead, all of those problems have always been the direct result of my own thinking only. Once I chose to be free from my own thoughts and from the better judgment of others, I was finally free to create and live the way I liked. I invite you to join me on this journey right now and start realizing that you too, have been free all along. Right now, you may perceive several problems and obstacles along your path. They may seem to be particularly daunting and big, so much so that you may find it difficult to free yourself from the worry thoughts, negative behaviors and destructive thought patterns that cloud your awareness. You may find it difficult to ignore the opinions and judgments of others in these matters, but understand that all that is only your current reality, and your current reality can easily be changed into a more desired one. I am here to assure you that this change is possible and even easy, if you allow it to be. If a worry wa er like me, who worried about everything under the sun, can do it and be completely free from all worries then everyone else can do it. I will show you a way to get out of your own way, to get out of your mind's way and to live freely, just as I have shown hundreds of thousands of readers around the world. The only thing I cannot do is to put all this into practice for you. This is where you must do the inner work necessary to see all of this through in your own life. My readers often ask how I can write from such a state of high energy and inspiration for each new book, and where my ideas come from. To me, writing seems like the most natural thing in the world to do. I am not straining or searching particularly hard for these ideas, for all I am writing about is the story of my own life and the experiences that I have been through. I am merely writing from my own perspective, sharing tips and techniques which I have used along the way to overcome certain blind spots in my own thinking. Hopefully, as a result of reading about my experiences and learning from them, the reader does not need to go through these experiences and detours in the way I have. The struggles and setbacks along the way are always optional. You do not need to fail or fall down hard before you can experience the ease and flow in your life. We only need to struggle until we finally learn the lessons, and with that we transcend into a new stage of understanding. It is my sincere intention that as you read this book, and especially at the end of this book, you too will be able to throw your arms up high in the air and shout at the top of your lungs. Today I am free. And once you have tasted that freedom, you will never look back. It will always remain a part of you, eternal and unchanging.
Chapter 2, The Manifestation Buck Stops With You. I have probably heard the phrase the buck stops here in passing more than a hundred times. Corporate and political leaders in modern times, most notably the late U.S. President Harry Truman, use it to mean taking full responsibility for decisions made within their organization. It means that the top person in any organization accepts ultimate responsibility for decisions made under their charge, and stops passing on the buck, blame. It was only recently that I realized the full significance of this phrase when applied in an individual context. Yes, the buck stops here contains within it a powerful manifestation principle, a principle which if properly understood, is even more valuable than the common philosophy of accepting 100% responsibility commonly expounded in self-help books. I invite you now to contemplate upon the truth that the manifestation buck stops with you. The obvious meaning of this saying is that you are responsible for everything which you create in your physical reality. But that's not the meaning I am referring to here. Instead, I invite you to ponder the possibility that all of your emotions and feelings, whether positive or negative, end with you. They remain with you. When you allow yourself to stew in these feelings for hours or even days on end, these feelings can have very real effects on your outer, physical manifestations. And hence as with all positive or negative emotions, the emotions stop at you. Making this realization is profound and powerful because it makes us pause and ponder. It makes us stop in our tracks and really look at what is going on in our inner state. What are the feelings that are there? What feelings are we carrying around with us for most of our day without even knowing it? What feelings have we carried over from the previous activity or previous day to the next? What residual feelings are you carrying right now as you read this book? All too often, our feelings spill over from one activity to the next without us even realizing it. Of course, it is alright if these are good, positive and pleasant feelings as they will go on to result in desired manifestations. But frequently, and if left unchecked, they are not. We sometimes, or oftentimes, Allow our days to be marred by a small unpleasant encounter in the morning or by a small incident at the workplace, and then stew for the whole day in those negative feelings. Each time we bring up and replay the incident in our mind, we are reliving and immersing ourselves in those negative feelings once more with great intensity and realism. Such vivid replanned immersion in these negative feelings can only lead to unwanted physical manifestations down the road. Unconscious creators do not realize that the manifestation buck stops with them. They do not understand why seemingly unwanted things keep occurring in their experience, not realizing they have been fully responsible for them through the power of their unchecked thoughts. They bear the full consequences of carrying those negative feelings around with them in their consciousness. No one else is responsible for the effects of the thoughts in your head except yourself. No other person on the planet bears the brunt, not even the person, or events, that you are angry with, or the person, or events, which made you feel angry in the first place. You may have a perfectly valid reason to feel the way you do, and that's absolutely alright. We all have the freedom to feel or think whatever we want to. But you must understand that no matter what you choose, the manifestation buck stops with you. This means that you must be prepared for the consequences of holding on to all those negative, unwanted emotions. Are these consequences something which you can bear? Are you willing to accept unwanted physical manifestations and a delay of the desired good in your life? Are you willing to accept more negative situations in your life? Resolve right now to make a decision to be free from all these negative feelings and emotions.
The state of being free is a conscious decision and choice which you can make at any time. Not something that happens automatically when you reach a certain state of enlightenment in your life. It is a choice which you can make this moment, right now. I made this choice many years ago in my spiritual journey when I realized the tremendous creative power of both my positive and negative thoughts. I had always known about the creative power of my positive thoughts as that was a subject commonly covered in many spiritual and self-help books. Most teachers talk about thinking and focusing positively in order to create a desired reality. But what I did not know was the tremendously destructive power of my negative thoughts. Once again, I use the word destructive here not to imply anything bad but simply to refer to a destruction of our desired manifestations. When I finally understood the cumulative effects of my negative thoughts on my manifestations, I resolved to never think in that way again. Does this mean that negative situations stopped cropping up in my life once I made that decision? No, life still continued happening for me, as it will for you. I still encountered my fair share of unhappy situations, interpersonal problems and less than considerate road users. Those were all the result of my residual, old, vibrations. However, my attitude towards these individuals and circumstances changed considerably. Instead of allowing myself to hold on to my negative feelings and self-righteousness or be judgmental about the situation, each incident was a physical reminder that the manifestation buck stopped with me. In a strange way, I saw the humor in all of those situations and was able to let go of my feelings of anger or frustration very quickly when they happened. I also became slightly bemused as to why the other party would willingly hold on to those negative feelings for so long. One common misconception about spiritual growth is that individuals who have done the inner work should not feel any negative or undesired feelings at all. Most people therefore go to great lengths to avoid feeling angry, critical, judgmental, irritated or frustrated at others. When they do, they become extremely disappointed with themselves and criticize themselves for their own lack of spiritual progress. This form of self-judgment and self-criticism is seldom useful. Spiritual enlightenment does not mean a total inability to feel these negative feelings. Even the Dalai Lama has candidly admitted that he gets angry at times. Spiritual enlightenment refers to an inability, or an unwillingness, to stew in these negative feelings. It refers to the ability to let go of these feelings so quickly the moment they arise before any damage, physical manifestations or the attraction of other negative thoughts, is done. Once you manage to do so, you free yourself from the crutches of all these negative feelings and save yourself from lots of unnecessary suffering in the process. If you'll make this your primary goal over the next few months or so, You'll find yourself letting go of these unwanted feelings with greater and greater ease. You'll find them slipping off you like water running off a duck's back or a waxed leaf. This is the imagery which I frequently hold in my mind, water droplets running off a lotus leaf, with absolutely no effort, struggle or strain. The struggle comes only when we allow ourselves to hold on to and stew in those negative feelings. Once you understand that spiritual mastery is about your ability to let go of negative feelings rather than the ability to not feel those feelings at all, you lighten up considerably. Suddenly, you stop being so harsh and hard on yourself. You understand that it is absolutely alright to feel all kinds of negative or even bad feelings, so long as you do not hold on to them. Recognize them for what they truly are. Just mere feelings, energy, caused by our own thoughts. Individuals are often surprised when I tell them it is alright to feel spontaneous feelings of anger, jealousy, lust, 
frustration or irritation. They are surprised to hear this coming from a spiritual teacher. But the difference is that in the moment I feel these feelings, I have already let them go without judging them for what they are, or holding on to them for one moment longer. I do not criticize myself for having any of them. I just let them go in the moment. Because I have made this my goal for the longest time, I am often able to let go of these feelings in less than a second. They run off like water on a duck's back for me. That is a huge improvement compared to who I was in the past, when I would carry them around for weeks or even months on end. I once heard an amusing story from an uncle of mine, who not surprisingly was afflicted with all kinds of unexplainable physical ailments and aches. Science is now validating the mind-body connection that self-help pioneers have suggested since the 1970s. It is now beginning to show that negative emotions, if held in the body for long periods of time can and will lead to physical illnesses, which are actually a form of, unwanted, physical manifestations. This uncle recounted the story of how he was overcharged by his mechanic for two pieces of wire, and he had been walking around seething with anger over that experience for the past 15 years. When asked how much he was overcharged, he indignantly replied that it was for $20. Can you believe it? Giving up so much of your happiness, well-being, health and other positive manifestations in life for a mere $20? Allowing yourself to stew in negative feelings of anger for 15 years over $20? Allowing yourself to walk around with that unhappy experience for $20? His bitterness was not hurting anyone else, certainly not the mechanic. He had to bear the full brunt of it. Sadly, there are many of such individuals around, which explains why there are still a number of unhappy and bitter people in the world today. Chances are they are not just stewing over one single incident, but many related and similar incidents that happened in their lives. All of these incidents are attracted by their dominant vibrations, which will only compound their negative feelings. If only they knew the immense power of their thoughts they would be able to turn their whole lives around in an instant. They are already free without even realizing it. The laws of our universe are so powerful that we have the freedom to choose to suffer. Let's flip the question around. Now that you know the immensely creative power of your negative thoughts, how much would someone have to pay you to stew in those feelings? Certainly not $20. How about one million dollars? Or not for any amount? I hope I have convinced you about the gravity of continually holding on to your negative thoughts for even one moment longer. They are not worth holding on to at any price. When you put things in this perspective, you instantly lighten up and let go of many of your petty worries and concerns. Suddenly everything falls into place. You stop seeing the money and little things in your life as being so important. When someone overcharges you for $10, you simply laugh it off. Not because you are easily fooled, but because you know better than that. When someone goes out of their way to give you a difficult time, you choose to ignore them and to treat them with kindness and respect. Not because you're a pushover, but because you know better. You know what the other person does not, which is the truth that the manifestation buck stops with you, and their manifestation buck stops with them. When you commit yourself to living in this manner and always coming from that place of highest love and peace, you'll find your outer reality gradually change. As you let go of more and more of your negative feelings, you'll find yourself coming into contact with fewer of these unpleasant or undesirable situations. This is the reality which I live in nowadays. I rarely come into contact with situations that rile me, whereas they used to be quite a regular occurrence for me. Consequently, 
you'll also find yourself feeling fewer and fewer of the undesirable emotions. They have become a thing of the past for me. Has the world around me changed for the better? Maybe. But I know that the biggest change has taken place in myself. As Dr. Wayne Dyer puts it so beautifully, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. The rest of this book shows you how to make these changes and recognize the freedom that has always been in you. Chapter 3, Manifestation and Progress all kinds of emotions and feelings, when allowed to linger in the body, can lead to instant manifestations. In the beginning, these instant manifestations will be in the form of an attraction of similar thoughts and ideas. For example, if you hold an angry thought in your mind or allow yourself to feel angry over something, you'll find that your anger gets worse the more you think about it. You begin to access more angry thoughts and find more reasons to validate your anger. You begin to find more things in your life or in your current situation to be angry about. This is the fundamental law of attraction at work here, in which like thoughts attract more thoughts of a similar nature. Let's suppose that instead of letting it all go at this point, you continue to stew in your pot of negative angry thoughts. What you have just done through the power of your thoughts is to attract a whole heavy mass of negative angry thoughts, similar in nature to the initial one which got it all started. The funny thing is that they don't even have to be related to the same incident, so long as they are similar in terms of vibration. In other words, you start having all kinds of bad feeling thoughts come to you. And some may even be from yesterday from other areas of your life or from a long time ago. If you will, picture a dense dark cloud getting larger and larger as more similar thought forms are drawn to it. That is a very accurate visual representation of these universal laws at work and a good reminder to keep at hand. The short-term consequence of all this is that you feel miserable on the inside. And these bad feelings cloud the perception and enjoyment of your day. You could be enjoying your life but you're not. Instead, you are spending your time stewing over that negative event. You feel bitter about your world, and the feeling is so awful inside because you are not allowing yourself to experience your full rightful connection to the universe. However, there are also longer term consequences. Let's suppose that you carry this dense, black cloud with you everywhere you go. You allow your inner state to be like this for most of your day. What will now happen is that you start attracting people, events and circumstances of a similar nature, more things to be angry about, more stuff to be unhappy about and so on. Through the power of your thoughts and feelings. You have just manifested a series of physical events which bring you even more unhappiness. And the cycle continues. The fascinating thing about the law of attraction is that this cycle works in both directions. You can easily replace anger with love in the preceding example and everything will work just as well. You can replace angry thoughts with happy thoughts and in an instant, your life goes from one of hell on earth to heaven on earth. Your life can change in an instant once you fully understand and live these universal principles. The key is to catch yourself when you are descending on the downward spiral and prevent yourself from getting too far down. Therefore, if you are able to catch yourself once that initial thought forms and let it go right there and then, then you have halted all unwanted manifestations in their tracks. But if you are only able to catch yourself when the physical manifestations have occurred, then you have more cleaning up to do. You'll now have to physically pick up the pieces and undo your unwanted manifestations. This is why manifestations are all about developing an extremely acute sense of self-awareness and inner awareness. Knowing what goes on at all times in your inner state is key.
I would like to offer a simple technique that complements the previous manifestation principle, the manifestation buck stops with you, perfectly. This technique is what I use on a daily basis to let go of any unwanted residual feelings and emotions before they become that looming massive dark cloud. When you use this technique, you diffuse the cloud before it forms and before it goes on to affect your physical manifestations. What I have realized is that we all hold on to our unwanted residual feelings in different ways. For me, I hold on to them through an unconscious clenching of my jaw, teeth. When I feel nervous or worried, I would clench my jaws together quite tightly without realizing it. In fact, I did it with such intensity over a long period of time that the alignment of my teeth have been affected. It was only after discovering this that I realized how much I had held on to my unwanted feelings and emotions over the years. Another way I hold on to unwanted negative feelings is through a momentary holding of my breath or through shallow breathing. Once again, all these unconscious physical actions were not obvious to me until I deliberately looked out for them. What I would like you to do is to observe yourself as you go about your day. Each time a situation comes up that makes you feel worried, angry or frustrated, any negative emotion, notice how your body handles it. Is there a subtle physical action that you engage in? It may just be one small action which you do over and over again, or it may be a combination of several almost imperceptible actions. Everyone has developed different ways of coping with their residual feelings over time. A few common coping mechanisms I have seen are, scratching certain parts of our bodies, twiddling of our thumbs, nervous laughter, twitching or trembling in parts of our body and so on. Sometimes these physical actions are noticeable to everyone except ourselves. They have become such a natural part of our being that we do not even notice we are doing them. Just be still and notice what you do each time one of these negative emotions well up inside you. It may also be spontaneous physiological signs such as a quickening of your breath and a lightheaded feeling. Our bodies handle residual feelings in different ways, so it pays to notice what happens in your case. Why does our body react in this way? Feelings and emotions are nothing more than energy flowing through our body. When our physical bodies are suddenly subject to an influx of energy, it has to do something to deal with that energy, as best as it can. It tries hard to expend that energy to get it out of our systems, so that we can return to a state of natural equilibrium. As we tend to hold on to our negative emotions instead of letting them go at once, our bodies have no effective ways to let go of these negative emotions other than to engage in these small physical actions to shake them off. These physical actions are our body's attempts to shake off some of that worry, nervous, angry energy. If you have ever felt your whole body tremble while you were in an intense state of anger, this is what we are talking about here. Your body was trying to cope with the sudden influx of powerful energy in your system. Once you notice the subtle signs which your body unconsciously exhibit when you are feeling negative emotions, you'll now have a physical signal to work with every single time. We no longer manifest unconsciously. Instead, we now have a bright and clear manifestation in progress. Sign that lights up for us each time we are creating our physical reality. Can you see the immense value in having such a real-time signal? Instead of waiting until our unwanted physical manifestations have occurred to realize that we created all that mess unknowingly, we are now instantly alerted the moment our manifestations take shape. What I have done is to train myself to look out for these subtle physical signs throughout the day. It should take very little effort once you make the initial link between the bodily actions and the negative emotions. For example, whenever I notice an unconscious and automatic clenching of my jaw, 
I immediately see the manifestation in progress. Sign light up in my head. That is when I take a few seconds to drop into my inner state and ask myself these two important questions, 1, what exactly am I manifesting here? And, 2, is it something wanted or unwanted? These two questions can save you from lots of unnecessary effort later on. Very often, I notice that I am right on my way to unwanted manifestations. This realization alone makes me let go of everything in that moment. The clenching of my jaws may have been due to certain worry feelings I felt, and I would not have realized I was negatively creating without these physical signs to alert me. How does this simple habit of noticing help in your daily manifestations? First, it alerts you the moment dark clouds start to form and gather mass. The bodily signs alert you to the very first signs of an unwanted thought and feeling forming in your body. The best time to let go of a thought is when it has not gained much traction, right when it just started to form. Therefore, you'll be able to let go of your small thoughts and feelings very easily at this stage. If you wait until they have grown considerably in intensity, it may be difficult to deal with the resulting vibrations and unwanted feelings. Second, letting go of these residual feelings restores your peaceful inner state. Your inner state is one centered on love and peace. When there are no negative thoughts or feelings clouding your perception, you feel a spontaneous good feeling. This good feeling is your connection to the universal source energy and it is always there. Unfortunately, negative feelings and faulty beliefs that cloud our awareness prevent us from noticing or feeling these powerful good feelings. You are either positively or negatively creating in each moment of your life. Negative creation takes effort, because you have to consciously immerse yourself in negative and unwanted feelings in order to keep vibrating at that level. Positive Creations on the other hand, are effortless. This is perhaps one of the most difficult spiritual truths for people to grasp, which is why they continue to place so much emphasis on physical work. They think they have to be out there, physically working at something in order to manifest positive things in their lives. But positive manifestations happen spontaneously when you free yourself from all the negative feelings. Our natural state is one of effortless love and peace. These good feelings arise spontaneously in our awareness once we default to a state of zero and nothingness, which means that our good is eternally flowing to us the moment we let go of our need to hold on to our negative emotions. Once you notice that the negative feelings and emotions are there, through your noticing of the bodily actions. There is no need to ruminate in them or examine why these feelings are there in the first place. There is no need to do a psychoanalysis of what caused you to feel that way. This kind of logical thinking and attempted fact-finding seldom serves its purpose, and if anything, will only lead an individual further into depression. One of the mistakes I made during the years I spent in deep depression was to keep asking myself the question, why do I feel so miserable? Why am I not happy? Of course, asking these questions only leads us in the wrong direction. Your brain will throw up any answers in response to the questions you ask, even if they are baseless and misleading. The appropriate thing I should have done back then was to simply let all of my feelings of misery and negativity go, just like that. A most delightful statement I have heard is this, the only reason for finding out why something happened is if you expect it to happen again. What a profound statement that represents a high level of understanding. Don't waste time changing the tale of your bad feelings. That will only make you run in circles. Instead, let them go the moment you notice they are there. This is the process which I use for letting go, the moment I notice the bad feelings I've been unconsciously holding onto, 
I take a deep breath and ask myself if I can let them go. Invariably, the answer will be a yes since these are just feelings, thought forms and energy, that I have been holding on to. As I come to the realization that I can let go of them, I gently breathe out. I repeat this as many times as possible until I feel all the negative energy gone from within me. As I breathe out, I picture the negative emotions as a dark cloud being exhaled out of me and leaving my body. My jaws gradually relax and I check into my inner state to ensure that no trace of that feeling remains. If even the slightest trace of that unwanted feeling remains, I repeat the letting go process with the remaining feeling. Especially in the beginning, it may be necessary to do the letting go process more than once. I've had to do it a few hundred times continuously in certain paces, but trust me, the relief that you get will be immense. Doing it a few hundred times may take you an hour or two at most. Whilst doing over it will have you mad at it for a few months or for a whole lifetime, not to mention the negative manifestation outcomes in your life. You will be doing yourself a big favor if you deal with unwanted feelings and emotions in this way each time they arise. One of the biggest benefits is that your wanted manifestations will come very quickly. I highly recommend the work of the late Lester Levinson and his student, Hale Stoskin, The Sedona Method, in learning how to let go of your negative emotions. Most people turn away from these teachings because negative emotions seem to have no relation to their manifestations, but the link can't be more obvious. When you let go of all your negative feelings, your desired manifestations have to happen spontaneously for you. Chapter 4, How Interpersonal Relationships Affect Your Manifestations Why is it so difficult for most people to completely let go of their residual tensions, worries and fears? We have already covered one main reason, which is a lack of knowledge, awareness about the serious consequences of holding on to these residual feelings. The second reason is because individuals do not know how to let these feelings go. We have never been taught how we can effectively let these feelings go without letting them stew and develop. All through life, we have been taught that the only way was to sit through the bad feelings themselves and hope we would feel better over time. As a result, our bodies have come up with various physical coping mechanisms to deal with these unwanted feelings, not all of them healthy, or fully effective. Let me take you through an actual example using the steps described in the previous chapter. Let's suppose that I am going through my day and suddenly notice myself clenching my jaws more tightly than usual. I am already aware of the link between my jaw clenching and my holding on to unwanted negative thoughts. Therefore the moment the jaw clenching happens, I am able to stop whatever I am doing and drop into my inner state. I realize after dropping into my inner state that my jaw clenching was caused by a text message which I received from a colleague just a few seconds earlier. The colleague had written something which caused me to feel spontaneous feelings of irritation towards her. Now remember that all of this manifestation work is never about the other person. It is always about ourselves and our own manifestations. Therefore, while we may perceive the blame to be we're on the other person for making us feel this way, the manifestation buck stops with us. We bear the full consequences of both our positive and negative feelings. My jaw clenching was the manifestation in progress. Sign lighting up for me. In that same instant, I ask myself two questions, what am I in the process of manifesting? The answer is obvious. My unwanted feelings of irritation will only lead to more situations that irritate me in the future whether it has to do with this colleague or otherwise. And the second question, is it something wanted or unwanted? 
I realized in a few short seconds that I was on my way to potentially unwanted manifestations. That is when I do the breathing and letting go exercise. It takes me a few rounds, but I finally let go of all the irritation in my body before they become stronger and more intense feelings of dislike or anger. As a result of letting go of my irritation, I decided not to reply to the colleague's text message and hence diffused a potentially tricky situation. Had I reacted like my old self and replied with equal indignation, I might have set off, manifested, a string of potentially unpleasant events. Therefore, the immediate benefits of letting go are immense. There is nothing more valuable than your inner state. I urge you to go through your day while repeating this exercise for yourself. In the beginning, as it was for me, there will be lots of incidents and instances like what I have described above. That's absolutely alright. All of life can throw itself at you and you can still be free, because you are no longer held captive by the feelings and emotions that you feel. You no longer follow them down the path. Instead, what you have just learned is a new way of letting them go right there in the moment. Do you realize how incredibly liberating this feeling is? Do you realize the immense power which you now have at your fingertips? No matter what life throws at you, you now have a quick and easy way to deal with it. Sure, circumstances may be dire, or even terrible, on the outside. But no matter what those outer circumstances are, your inner circumstances will never be disturbed. You will remain like the clear water of a still pond despite any outer disturbances. That is the ultimate freedom, and that is why you are already free, perhaps without even realizing it. The longer you take to put this into practice, the longer you take to apply all these. The longer you will remain at the mercy of your unwanted feelings. People things and circumstances will forever dictate and control how you feel. You become a slave to your feelings, an observer and reactor instead of a creator. A creator decides what he wants to focus upon and how he wants to feel, while an observer, reactor simply reacts to everything he observes in his physical reality. But our physical reality is only our current reality and your current reality can always be changed for something even better. An observer, through his fixation on current reality, actually perpetuates his unwanted reality instead of changing it. There are many individuals out there who are addicted to the drama of it all. These are individuals who have over time, become addicted to their own angry feelings, or the high that they get when they engage in an argument with others. Sadly, our bodies can become conditioned to find these unwanted feelings familiar, especially if they are the only feelings we have known all our lives. If you do not put these techniques into practice and let go of your unwanted feelings the moment they arise, you will find yourself getting sucked into lots of nasty situations with these individuals. They will say something or do something which provokes you and then you'll fall into their trap by reacting the way you have always done. Sadly, this scenario plays out in relationships, homes and offices all over the world. Different people, but exactly the same pattern. Some couples are at it all the time. Some parents are at it all the time with their children. Yet if only one party learns the significance of these teachings and walks away from it all, then the buck stops there. The situation is changed forever. Try as they might, the other party can never get you to be a willing party in any argument again. Over time, your vibrations will be so far apart that they will start to drop out from your lives or change themselves to match you. If I just described a situation in your life, try this method of letting go. You will be surprised at the changes that take place in the other person once you let go of these feelings yourself. It has never been about the other person, 
and there is no need to deliberately try and change the other person. Let him or her be but change your inner state. Most people in similar situations would talk about wanting to change the mindset or correct the behavior of the other person by perhaps reasoning it out with them. Unfortunately, as you probably have realized, that's when the situation usually takes a turn for the worse. That seldom works because we are trying to do things in reverse. We can never control and dictate the behavior of another free-willed human being. Try as we might, we will never be able to control enough people such that their behavior pleases us. Think about all the things you have to change, and all the people of you would have to control for that to work out. You may end up losing your mind before successfully doing so, which is sadly what has happened to many who have attempted to control the world around them through such external means. Therefore, don't fall into the trap of trying to control external circumstances. Those have never been under your control anyway. Instead, do it the easier way. Free yourself from the behaviors and actions of these people. At the same time, free them from your expectations of them. Stop expecting or dictating that they behave in a certain way that pleases you. Whatever way they present themselves to you, just handle it with poise and let all your feelings go the moment they well up for you. Very soon, these difficult individuals will disappear from your reality as they realize nothing they do can even perturb you. Today you are free. I am spending some time discussing these teachings in the context of interpersonal relationships because it is one of the trickier issues we deal with in our daily lives. Very often, an unpleasant interaction with just a single individual can spoil our whole day and lead to a whole host of unwanted bad feelings. We continued to stew over the encounter for several days or weeks on end sometimes even going to the extent of wanting to get even with them. Stop right there. Did you see that manifestation in process? Sign lighting up in your head along with these thoughts? Don't allow yourself to go further and further down the chute. Instead, break out of this negative cycle by letting go. It only takes a few minutes but it will bring you a lifetime of lasting peace of mind and relief. The effects you get when you attempt to physically control the behaviors of others will never be lasting. You may be able to coerce them into behaving in a certain way through power or intimidation, but they will rebel at the very first chance they get. This applies to co-workers, children, spouses, superiors or subordinates. So the situation can only recur in the future. The only way to become truly free of the situation is to change how you feel on the inside. Now I'm not going to kid you and tell you that it is going to be extremely easy to do. You may not succeed the first few times you do it. Chances are that you'll not be able to control yourself the first few times you need to use this technique. You'll still be tempted to react as you always did probably with a harsh or rude rebuttal. But that's alright, developing the awareness is what matters. And awareness brings everything to light so you can keep working on it. So never be disappointed by your initial lack of progress. Let go of that disappointment in yourself too. I think I still reacted in my old way the first hundred times or so. But I developed greater awareness and mastery over myself each time I did so. I managed to free myself a little bit more from my old way of being each time I practiced this technique. Subtle changes were occurring in my inner state even though it seemed like I was making little progress. The first 50 times or so, I could not help but react as I always did, with a feisty rebuttal to what the other party said. Thereafter, I let go sufficiently to keep quiet and not offer an initial response. However, the other party was persistent and kept at it. I found myself unable to remain silent as they used different ways to provoke a reaction out of me, 
which is what they often want. So although I could keep quiet initially, I found myself caving in and arguing with them as they continued. Finally, after the hundredth time or so, I could just let it all go no matter what they said or what they used. I was truly free. You will get to that point someday if you keep at it. I deepened my practice to a point where I was able to thank each and every one of these individuals who gave me a chance to practice this technique, albeit silently in my mind and not out loud. I think it is a good mindset to develop. Instead of seeing them as adversaries, thank them silently with genuine gratitude for giving you an opportunity to practice. Thank them for bringing these issues to light so that you can work with them, once and for all. We must understand that the real problem is never about them. It is about us. And once we practice being free with them, we free ourselves from everyone else and from other similar situations in life as well. These individuals are in our lives for a reason, to give us an opportunity to practice. The most counterintuitive thing happens when you are free from the perceived unreasonable behavior of others. Once you are free from the negative actions and words of others, the moment you no longer react to them as before. Such situations stop showing up in your life. I often write that when you finally learn the lessons you need to learn, these lessons stop presenting themselves to you. In their place will be peace of mind, freedom and all your positive manifestations. Chapter 5, Can Other People's Thoughts Affect Our Manifestations? In my previous books, I have focused mainly on the negatively creative feelings of worry and fear. These two tend to be the most pervasive feelings that can keep individuals stuck on the hamster wheel for years, and hence much focus and self-awareness is needed to undo their negative effects. I should know, since I spent many years trapped by these feelings without even knowing it. Much of my experience with fear and worry feelings has been detailed in my earlier books, such as it is done. And playing in time and space. The moment an individual finds a way to let go of these persistent worry and fear feelings, their reality starts to change for them. They no longer spend so much time and energy feeling worried which frees up a huge chunk of their mental capacity to be spent on their more desired manifestations. However, most students will also realize after overcoming the hurdles of worry and fear that there are now other subtler emotions that float to the top of their awareness. They should not be disappointed with their new discovery since it is a clear sign of progress. They have dealt with the major, worry and fear, issues. And now all that is left are the minor negative feelings that can affect our manifestations. Once you have eaten most of the cereal floating at the top of a bowl of milk, those that have sunk to the bottom will now be easier to scoop up. In my book Inner Confirmation for Outer Manifestations, I share a technique for checking in on your inner state to identify whether you are positively or negatively creating in the moment. In this book, I would like to go into greater detail on some of the negative feelings that are most commonly present in our inner states. Once again, it is not important why these negative feelings are there. Attempting to look for their source will be like a dog chasing its tail. Instead, all you need to do is to become aware of these feelings and gently let them go. The buck stops with you. You become free the moment you let them go and it does not make a difference whether you understand why they were there in the first place. Also, as I've realized, many of these feelings are the result of social, negative conditioning we received when we were young. Therefore, there may be no logical reasons for these beliefs in many cases. We simply came to accept them as true when we lacked the necessary reasoning faculties. Think about how a young child simply accepts Santa Claus as real without any buts or questions. 
As far as she is concerned, Santa is real and she believes wholeheartedly in that truth. A new belief was instilled in her young mind just like that. If it can happen with harmless and innocuous beliefs such as believing in Santa Claus, there is no reason why more negative beliefs such as I am not loved or I need to gain the approval of others can't take shape in our young consciousness, especially if triggered by certain external events. This is the reason why many of us walk around in adult bodies while still holding on to many beliefs we have formed as six-year-olds. There is nothing inherently wrong with having these beliefs. The issue is not whether these beliefs are true or false. Instead, the more appropriate question to ask is whether these beliefs are resourceful. Do our beliefs serve us? Or do they create more suffering for us? Do these beliefs stand in the way of our ultimate freedom to create? If the answer is yes, then it is a good idea to replace some of those faulty beliefs with more resourceful ones. One of the most pervasive beliefs, right after those that cause worry and fear, is that we need to seek the approval of others in order to survive. This belief is so pervasive in our society that we will often go out of our way to please others or to ensure that others form a good impression of us. As a result, we spend an inordinate amount of time trying to look good in front of others and trying to make sure they think well of us. We may even lie or resort to less than honest means to achieve these ends. There have been many books exploring the causes and effects of such approval-seeking behavior so I shall not go into the full details here. Instead, my intention is to show you how approval-seeking behavior can potentially affect our manifestations. When we were young, we looked up to the authority figures, our parents and teachers, in our lives. We accepted everything they said without question. It is interesting to watch a young child ask his, her parents a question, and then accept every answer the parents give. Even though the parents may have just lied to her, perhaps to brush the child off. As such, I am especially careful when I communicate with young children these days. I always make it a point never to brush them off and to give them proper, empowering answers. Every word uttered to young children or in their presence goes a long way towards building their beliefs system. Over time, young children learn that each time they did something wrong, these authority figures in their lives were displeased and would even take action to withhold certain rewards from them. As such, they began to associate their survival and well-being in this world with gaining the approval, avoiding the disapproval, of others. It was certainly true in their world, each time they acted out of line, they were punished, and each time they acted appropriately, they were rewarded. While this might have been true for a child, it is no longer true for us as adults. There are no longer any authority figures in our lives who can dish out rewards and punishments for us, yet we still behave as if there is someone who is wanting to reward and punish us at every turn. The only person who can punish us is ourselves, through our misuse and misunderstanding of these universal laws. God certainly doesn't seek to punish us. Why would a loving father want to do so? We carry this behavior into society where we are eager to get into the good books of others and make sure people think well of us. This belief manifests itself as approval-seeking behavior and the extreme fear of being judged by others. We are afraid of being judged or criticized by others whether in a social or a work setting, and we often go to great lengths to engage in impression management. In one of the courses I teach that touches on ethics, I often ask college students why there is a need to behave ethically in life. Class after class, semester after semester, the answer I receive is always to avoid being judged by others. Their answer indicates that the fear of being judged is more pervasive than we think, and especially so to college students. 
But you may ask, how does all this affect my manifestations? Impression management is a good thing. When others think highly of us, we will achieve more and be given more opportunities in life. So where is the downside of holding this belief? Therein lies the hidden downside that has trapped so many, and it is this, if we cannot be totally free from the opinions and judgments of others, we will always be affected by them. Our inner states will always be affected by what others think, and hence their judgments will affect our outer physical reality as well. At the simplest level, this means that we can never be free from the opinions of others when deciding what we want. Instead of being able to focus on our desires purely, we have to deal with the numerous concerns and objections that others may have. This is why pandering to the demands and opinions of others can result in stumbling blocks to our manifestations. I still remember coming across an ad for a car in the early days of my journey. I was instantly drawn to the car when I saw it due to its beautiful design and all the marvelous technological features that fascinated me. It would be nice if I can own such a car, I thought. However, I immediately came up against a thousand and one objections in my mind. I was not conscious of it at that time, but most of my spontaneous objections had to do with the opinions and judgments of others. For example, what would my friends think of me if I drove such an expensive car? What would my parents think? What would my family think? Would they see me as a show-off? How would I be perceived by others? Over the years, I have found this to be true for many of my challenging manifestations as well. Surrounding these intentions were various concerns and objections related to the imagined opinions and thoughts of others. What I would like you to do right now is to gently bring to mind one of your intentions and see whether this is the case for you. Are you constantly worried about what others may think and how they might react? Are you frequently worried about how you will be perceived, or what will happen if your manifestations do come true for you? If so, you have fallen into the trap of seeking approval for your intentions and desires. I have found after doing this exercise with many individuals over the years that the fear of being judged criticized by others is probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks for our manifestations, right behind our fears, worries that our manifestations will not happen. Notice that although my initial desire for that car was pure, untainted by the judgments and opinions of others, my vibrations quickly became contradictory once I held the intention for longer periods of time. The moment I contemplated and pondered it in my mind, my old belief system threw up all sorts of objections related to my fear of being judged. The reverse is true as well, successful individuals who surround themselves with friends who achieve similar levels of success will probably not have these concerns, and as a result will be able to manifest the same desire effortlessly since they do not have to deal with this inner hurdle. This is why things can be slow to happen in the beginning when we are trying to create a new and more desired reality. We are often trapped in our current circumstances and too concerned about the opinions of others. Can the opinions and thoughts of others ever affect our manifestations? For example, can someone else's thoughts alone ever prevent us from getting what we want? Abraham Hicks have repeatedly assured us that the thoughts of another have absolutely no say in determining our manifestations. We cannot create on behalf of another. The only thing that matters is our own thoughts about the subject. This is especially empowering since it means that our reality is never at the mercy or in the hands of others. We are free. When you understand this, you see how contradictory our unquestioned beliefs and behaviors are. Here we are, believing that we have to gain the approval and goodwill of others in order to succeed in life when in fact, our success has never once been dependent on others. 
It has always been dependent on ourselves and ourselves only. What I have also found to be true is that most of us are unable to hold our own thoughts without being affected by the judgments and opinions of others. Therefore, while other people's thoughts alone can never affect our manifestations, they can have an effect on our manifestations through their effect on our own thoughts. As with everything, awareness is the first step to freeing yourself from this trap. The moment you are aware that many of your contradictory vibrations and counter intentions are caused by the imagined opinions of others, you bring the issue to light and can finally start to work on it. Previously, you may have all sorts of objections and concerns without really knowing why. When you free yourself from the better judgments and opinions of others, you become free. Chapter 6, Today I am free from the opinions of others. The opinions of others can run our lives if we are unaware of their influence. Most people will claim to be free from the better judgments and opinions of others, but a quick observation of how they lead their lives shows the exact opposite to be true. For example, some individuals often proclaim, I don't care what others think of me. But these are the same individuals who will fuss about their hair and dressing, or worry about whether they should do this or that. Of course, I am not suggesting that you become an obnoxious being who completely ignores those around you. But you should not become overly concerned or driven by others to the exclusion of your own well-being. Your own well-being and inner state should always take precedence over the judgments and opinions of others. Here's a little experiment to see if you are free from the judgments of others. The next time you are at a social party, gathering or even a meeting at work, just sit, stand quietly by yourself and observe the way you feel on the inside. Do you feel self-conscious? Do you feel uncomfortable? Are you constantly thinking about how others will perceive you? Even a small nagging feeling indicates that you are still not free from the judgments and opinions of others. Resolve to let that feeling go the moment it arises in you. In fact, I look forward to parties and weddings now, even though I am not much of an extrovert myself because it gives me the precious opportunity to practice letting go of this fear of being judged. Furthermore, most people whom you encounter at parties or networking events will be strangers. Which means you will probably not see them again in the future. Hence this is a safe way to slowly become free from the judgments of others. What I'll usually do is to stand or sit quietly in a corner of the room once I arrive. At this moment, most of us will usually have thoughts of, oh no, I can't blend in here or oh no, everybody knows somebody and I know no one. I am the odd one out. Know that thoughts like this are merely our own projections onto the situation. We are projecting our own fearful beliefs onto the situation and taking it as the objective truth. When in fact everything is just conjured up by our own mind. Everything is merely playing out in our own mind. At this moment, you may notice your body exhibiting some of the subtle physical actions described in Chapter 2. You may feel your palms starting to sweat, or your jaws clenching up. This is a perfect reminder for you to let go of those negative fears of being judged. What I do is to sit, stand in the corner, observing others, until I completely let go of those negative feelings. Once again, parties are a wonderful opportunity to practice and I urge you to try it. Two things immediately happen when I let go of all these spontaneous self-conscious feelings. First, everything changes for me. I lighten up and the mood at the party instantly seems more friendly and at ease. That is because we are no longer projecting our own baseless fear thoughts onto the situation. Remember the earlier saying by Wayne Dyer? When we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. Second, 
At this point, I am usually in a position to enjoy the party more. I usually look more radiant and carefree instead of stifled and self-conscious. Guess what? People around you pick up on that too and will start approaching you. They will start talking to you and the evening gets better from there. I am not suggesting that you deliberately go to parties or dinners in order to practice this. Resist the temptation to turn it into work or something you have to practice. But if you do get invited, and the next time you get invited, treat it as the perfect opportunity to let go. I no longer dread receiving party or wedding invitations because these self-conscious feelings no longer come up for me. Instead, I am able to enjoy the party or the concert freely without any of the false projections of my ego mind. I am amused at the number of ways I made myself feel bad previously, by being self-conscious about literally everything, from my dressing, whether I said the right things, my appearance to my perceived intelligence. When you let all of these petty worries and concerns go, you free yourself not only from that one situation but from all other similar situations in your life. I used to be very self-conscious whenever I was in an elevator together with strangers. Once again, these are baseless fears and concerns that originate from an overly active ego mind. Our parents might have been so critical of us when we were young, in an attempt to get us to improve, that we now bear the constant fear of being criticized and judged. It is important to let go of these feelings that crop up for you the moment they arise. When I'm in an elevator with strangers and feel them judging me, I immediately let those feelings go without a second thought. I know that those feelings are not real. They were just carried over from earlier times in my life. The good news about living in a modern society is that it gives us sample opportunities to practice. No matter where we live, our daily commute ensures that we will meet and come into close proximity with others. Sometimes, this contact can bring up self-conscious and negative feelings. If I could stick a scope into someone's brain and see what they were thinking, it would be, what do they think of me? This scenario repeats itself everywhere around the world, in almost every social situation and yet we have come to accept it as normal. It is not normal. Everyone is just running the unconscious programs they have picked up from childhood. How does this affect our manifestations? First, any feeling or emotion which you immerse yourself in for long periods of time has an effect on your outer manifestations. Therefore, if you are worried for most of the day about how you are judged or perceived by others, you are spending a disproportionate amount of mental focus on these unwanted aspects of your life. You would have placed your mental focus on being judged or being criticized, and this leads to a downward spiral in which you attract more of these situations in life to be concerned about. Over the years, I have interacted individuals from different walks of life. I noticed that the individuals with extremely low self-esteem and self-confidence were always the ones who cared most about how they were perceived by others. The problem became so serious for some of them that they eventually broke down and could not function effectively in the real world. One unfortunate individual, a friend of mine, quit his job and holed himself up at home. This would not have been as much of an issue if he was a child, but he is a fully grown adult. What happened is that over time, he has allowed himself to believe in the projections of his own ego. The last we spoke, he was utterly convinced of how everyone was mocking him whenever he went. Fortunately, for most of us, our own self-conscious feelings and fears of being judged are not as extreme. But still, when we are not worrying about whether our manifestations will appear, most people worry about whether they will be favorably perceived by others. Now you can see why this is the next pervasive belief on the list which we have to deal with.
When you let go of your irrational fears of being judged, you instantly feel so much lighter and freer that you can now put all that newfound mental energy towards your desired manifestations. So the next time you are in a social gathering with a small group of friends, take time to check in on your inner state and notice how you are really feeling on the inside. Are you genuinely enjoying the gathering of friends? Or is there a little part of you that remains self-conscious about how you look, what you say and how you will be perceived by others? When you are in a conversation with another, are you always thinking about how they will react to what you say? If so, recognize that these are merely your own imagined projections onto the situation. They are not real to begin with. And even if the other party reacted or thought unfavorably about whatever you had to say, it would be something beyond your control in the first place. We can never control the behaviors and reactions of others. Did you see the endless game here that most people unknowingly participate in? We perceive such a need to control our external circumstances to get what we want that we attempt to control the perception of others. We try to look right or say the right things in the hope that others will give us what we want. Therefore, all our fears of being judged stem from a need to control the behavior and perceptions of others, which can never be controlled in the first place. Every individual is a free-willed being, and there is nothing you can do if they wanted to perceive you in some other way. Once you realize this, you instantly give up all your struggle and strive in the real world. You stop caring about how you are perceived at the workplace. Instead, you focus wholeheartedly on tending to your inner state, because that is the only part of you that you have full control and autonomy over. That is the only part which is your responsibility. If you will only focus on tending to your inner state and center yourself in a state of love and peace, then all the external circumstances will line up and match up to you. Doesn't this sound familiar compared to what you have read in my earlier books? In my other books, I suggested not worrying about whether your manifestations would arrive. If only you will tend to your inner state and make your good feelings your highest priority, then everything you ask for would appear in the right time. The exact same principle applies here, if only you will tend to your inner state and always live from a place of highest love and non-judgment, then people and things will begin to happen for you. The strangest thing happened once I let go of all my self-conscious feelings. I encourage you to try this and experience this firsthand for yourself too. All of a sudden, people started coming up and talking to me. They opened their hearts and poured their souls out to me. Deeper into the conversation, they often remarked how they felt they could trust me, or developed an instant sense of liking the moment they saw me. Even before I said a single word. We felt like old friends and kindred spirits. Of course, there is a greater spiritual principle at work here. We were always picking up on the energy field of others. Beyond our physical appearances and dressing, your inner state is constantly being projected and broadcast outwards. We pick up on the energy fields of others as first impressions or feelings about another person that we often ignore in favor of more objective physical evidence. Ironically, our first impression is often the most reliable because it comes from a part of others that they cannot mask or hide. Whatever is there in our inner states is projected outwards clearly for everyone to see. The moment I dropped my need to control the impression or opinions of others about me, those around me picked up on my new inner state and developed an instant liking to me. They knew that I was not there to manipulate them in any way. I was there to interact with the purest of intentions. Give up your need to control others. Conversely, when you find a need to use one of the many tools out there to manage others' impressions of you, Tools such as NLP, mirroring, persuasion, brainwashing, 
manipulation, hypnosis for building instant trap or, you fall into the trap of using outer direct and actions to control the external world to get what you want. I have already shown you the fallacy of using these methods throughout all of my books. In fact, you can prove it to yourself easily. How do you feel each time you watch a presenter on stage using one of those NLP or instant trap or techniques? What is the first, purest impression you get? Sure, you may find yourself agreeing with some of his points, but the nagging and overriding impression that simply refuses to go away is that he is a smooth and slick talker. He comes across as fake and insincere. He seems to be hiding something but you can't seem to put your finger on it. We always pick up on a person's true intentions, his inner state, which no amount of external techniques can mask. Free yourself from the need to use all these external methods and techniques today. You have always been free. Chapter 7 Every encounter is an opportunity to practice. The free, manifestative state is our natural state that comes to us without even trying. It is a state that is independent from our doing and from all our physical actions. It is a state of pure being as opposed to doing. Any time you feel the urge to engage in outer directed actions to make something happen on the outside, you ironically move further and further away from your natural free state into a state of scarcity, limitation and lack. These outer directed actions may be manifestation techniques such as affirmations and visualizations that try to make something happen, or they may be persuasion techniques to subliminally influence another person to agree with you. Our egos perceive the need to use these techniques because it sees each one of us as separate from one another, and hence the need for competitive actions to shore up, accumulate as much good for oneself as possible. However, as a student of this material, you know better. You know that the only thing you really have lasting control over is your inner state and hence you focus all your efforts wholeheartedly on tending to your inner state. Tending to your inner state is not about doing anything. We are not trying to add anything that is not there already. Instead, all we are doing is reconnecting with and recognizing that feeling of deep inner peace and love that has always been there since the beginning of time. But if this feeling has been around since the beginning, why is it that we cannot feel it? Why is it that most people walk around unaware that they have this wellspring of immense peace and love within them? That's because over time, their inner states have become tainted by unwanted feelings of worry, fear, self-consciousness and guilt. When every moment of our lives is spent worrying about whether our manifestations will happen, or whether we are making a good impression on others, our focus is always somewhere else. It is always misplaced. We pay attention only to the false projected images and thoughts of the ego mind, instead of to who we really are. One analogy I use is looking through a piece of originally clear glass. If that piece of glass is dirty or blurry, we will always notice and remain fixated on the dirt and grime on the glass. Individuals who wear glasses often have the amusing experience of rubbing their eyes frantically to clear up their blurred vision, only to realize that it was their glasses that were dirty all along. The same thing applies here. All you need to do is to let go off the dirt and grime on your glasses to perceive clearly again. The solution is not to rub your eyes over and over again, or to draw on your glasses in an attempt to correct your vision. Once you have identified the subtle bodily action which you unknowingly engage in when your body is holding on to negative feelings, you'll have a constant reminder to let go. Each time you feel that feeling or notice yourself doing that thing, you gently remind yourself to let go of the feeling in the moment without labeling or judging it. Just gently let it go. 
This exercise is so valuable and powerful because we can do it any time throughout the day, no matter where we are. I may just be sitting or standing there quietly by myself, when in fact I am letting unwanted feelings go from my inner state. It is imperceptible to outsiders, but the shifts in our inner state will be profound. Life brings us many opportunities to practice this as we go about our day. For example, I may be in a crowded elevator when I suddenly feel my jaw clenching up. Instead of judging or believing in those feelings, I see it as a gentle reminder to let go. In a few seconds, I feel totally free from those irrational feelings of uneasiness that gripped me a few moments ago. My physical surroundings, the elevator, is still the same, but as a result of my immense shifts within, the atmosphere feels different. Everything has lightened up. I am free. Tend to your inner state by taking every single opportunity you have to practice. Understand that it is never about the other person. It is always about you. Therefore, when you come into contact with situations and scenarios that cause even the slightest amount of uneasiness or tension within you, practice using this technique to let go. How do you know if the situation is causing you discomfort? You'll almost always revert back to displaying those subtle bodily actions. That is a clear sign that your inner state is not in its naturally free state. If you will keep up this habit for the next few weeks or so, you would have made so much progress that you will be a completely new person at the end of a few weeks. Things that bother you will no longer bug you anymore, or as much. After a few encounters with the elevator, I now walk freely into one and feel totally at peace with myself. After a few awkward face reddening encounters at parties, I am now completely alright and even look forward to attending the next one. I no longer need to consciously let go at parties because my jaws do not clench up anymore. I am now free from all those negative feelings and emotions. I used to have an interaction with others and thereafter, spend days or weeks worrying about what they thought of me. For example, I may perceive something they said as an unfavorable impression of me, or perceive one of their reactions to be in direct response to something I had done. These feelings of uneasiness or self-consciousness would go on to plague me for weeks, thus affecting my inner state. The amusing thing about such situations is that they happen to almost everyone, because we are so concerned with what others think of us. These feelings become more intense in a high-stakes situation, for example at a job interview or an appraisal session by your boss. The first thing you should realize is that these are all the imagined projections of your ego mind. They may be true but they may also not be true. The other party may have been responding to you, but chances are they were just doing their own thing and did not even know they have reacted to you in that manner. When we meet someone, we tend to ascribe their behaviors and reactions to things we have done or said, when much of their reactions are actually due to their emotional conditioning habit or their past experiences with others. In other words, we were all carrying lots of emotional baggage to the table. We are all reacting to others based on past interactions we have had, or our current level of consciousness. One thing this has taught me over the years is to be totally free from the behavior and reactions of others. Be free from how someone perceives or treats you. Allow them to treat or perceive you in whatever way they want, because they have the freedom to choose. The moment you insist that they must perceive you favorably or treat you in a certain way, you are imposing your will on them. A friend of mine used to get upset when he was treated rudely or disrespectfully by others. He would rant about the situation for days and become very affected by it. He would write nasty complaint letters when he was in a position to do so. Needless to say, this was affecting his own inner state, 
which only led to more of such situations in his life. It seemed that he ran into rude individuals everywhere he turned, just that they were in different clothes and different bodies. Abraham Hicks have a perfect way of looking at the situation. They teach a statement which goes like this, how you choose to treat, perceive me is less of who I am, and more of who you are. What they are really teaching here is freeing yourself from your self-imposed expectations of other people's behaviors. Let them behave in any way they like, because the way they behave is not so much about you but more about who they are as individuals. How someone else behaves is largely driven by their own circumstances in life and their inner state, and how unfair it would be to place that burden of blame on yourself. How unfair it would be to take full responsibility for their actions. Once you realize this fundamental truth, you are totally free. You have always been free and now you come full circle in recognizing your innate freedom from the behavior of others. Whenever you interact with others, you free them to behave in whatever ways they like. They can be nice to you or they can be nasty to you, but you will not be affected either way. You understand that they are behaving in this manner not because of you, but because of themselves. You therefore allow them the ultimate freedom to be themselves. The surprising thing that happens when you adopt this perspective is that you suddenly run into the nicest people everywhere. In my book Bind Money Secrets, I talk about how I met rude salespeople everywhere I turned for a period of time in my life. That was because I was always ranting about them and keeping my continued focus on them. I was always telling others about my bad experiences. When I finally freed them from my expectations, I came into contact with the nicest salespeople ever. Individuals who would treat me like royalty and go out of their way to help me. Have they all been sent for customer service courses? Of course not. All it took was one simple yet profound shift on the inside. Freeing others from your expectations does not mean that you condone hurtful or violent behavior. This is not what I am referring to here. Much as you allow another person to behave in any way he, she wants, you still retain the ultimate freedom to walk away from an abusive relationship. You can still stand up and speak up when things are wrong. While I allow individuals the freedom to behave in whatever ways they want, I can still exercise my options if their behaviors toe the line. Sometimes the best way is to just walk away from a dysfunctional relationship. What I have realized is that the more I tend to my inner state and the more I value my own good feelings, the less of such situations I come into contact with. When you sort out your inner states first, you'll steer clear from all individuals events and circumstances that do not match up to the way you feel on the inside. What I have outlined is a simple way for you to free yourself from these feelings of self-consciousness. We start first by practicing at gatherings, parties and in social situations. Once we become totally free from the perceived opinions of others in those settings, You'll find yourself caring less and less about what people think of you in more personal, one-to-one -one settings. For example, I used to care what the world thought about me when I had to give a presentation at work. I used to be so concerned about how I looked and every word I said, about whether I was appearing intelligent enough. What a convoluted way of operating in the world, so devoid of joy. Ever since freeing others to be themselves and allowing them to react in whatever ways they liked, which only took a simple shift in myself, I can now concentrate on enjoying myself and giving an enjoyable presentation. I am no longer concerned about managing someone else's unmanageable expectations. Rather, I place my focus on enriching them and telling them everything I know about the subject. When I freed myself from all these self-imposed expectations, 
my audience reacted even more enthusiastically. This brings us back to a point I made at the beginning, your true intentions, your inner state, can never be masked from others. When you stop trying to control others, they will stop trying to control you too. Chapter 8, Manifesting Independently of Others in Life The most common objection thrown up by individuals when I suggest this new way of living is, but I can't live this way. What my boss, or any other important person in your life, thinks of me matters a whole lot. If this sounds like you, then it is even more important that you try this new way of living. Anytime you feel that your life, career advancement or success is in the hands of another. You will never be free. You will always be subject to the whims and fancies of the other person, and that is a very precarious position to be in. You may think that your career is secure and settled, but the other party is always free to do whatever he likes. You too, are free to do whatever you like. Therefore, Freedom built upon another person is always an illusion because you can never control the thoughts, actions and behaviors of others. It may seem as if you need someone's approval or good appraisal to get ahead in life right now. This may be your spouse, your partner, your boss, or your parents. While this may seem true in your current life situation, Start by placing less emphasis on getting into the good books of the other person. Try to think and care less about what the other person thinks. Instead, focus on yourself. Focus on doing a good job, on living up to your highest potential, on listening to your higher self and on your sense of well-being. If you will make these your priorities, then everything will automatically line up for you on the outside. You will get all the good and recognition that you desire. One of the biggest things that people give up when they try to pander to the demands of others or tailor their way of working to others is their own well-being. In the process, they lose their sense of individuality and joy because they are now merely executing instructions and going out of their way to please the other person in this relationship. This too, is a convoluted way to control the perceptions of others by engaging in outer directed actions. Give the need for all of this up. Try this new way of living and acting in the world. I am not suggesting that you act callously and irresponsibly in any relationship. What I am suggesting is that you stop caring so much about what the other party, your colleagues, superiors, subordinates, spouse, partner, thinks of you. Instead, focus most of your effort and attention on to getting your job well done. You'll find yourself a much happier person and this usually leads to a much better appraisal than one obtained in the former situation. Notice how I have structured our discussion so far. First, I have talked about freedom from the perceived opinions of strangers and acquaintances, people who do not really matter to you. Second, we discussed freedom from the judgments and opinions of those who are closer to you, friends, family and colleagues. Now we are talking about freeing yourself from the opinions of those whom you perceive to depend on for your happiness in life. This is a big jump for most people. Making this shift in thinking allows you to eventually become free from the judgments and opinions of every single person in your life. When you can reach this stage of becoming free from them no matter who they are, even if they are your parents you would have reached a significant milestone in your manifestation journey. You will then be able to deepen your practice of many of the principles we have discussed so far. By becoming free from the opinions and judgments of others, I am not suggesting that you act in ways that will deliberately upset them or make them unhappy. It does not mean that you can now go and do all the things which they once prevented you from doing. That's not what I mean. 
it is not a form of rebellious behavior which I am advocating here. Rather, what I am suggesting is that you place the focus on your own well-being and own inner state instead of theirs. Base your decisions and actions in life on what your higher self, your feelings, tell you, instead of what someone else might think. If you receive a clear impulse and it feels light and right to you, then that is all that matters. The opinions of another person do not matter. Until you free yourself from the opinions and judgments of others, your outer reality and manifestations in life will always be affected by them to a large extent. In fact, take a look right now at some of the intentions and desires which you have set for yourself. Knowing what you now know, how many of these intentions and desires are not really yours? How many of them would please another person if you achieved them? How many of them are really another person's desires, fulfilled vicariously through you? It may be a good idea to weed out all of these intentions from your consciousness since they were never yours to begin with. When some individuals try this process for the first time, they are immediately surprised, or even shocked, to discover that some of their longest standing desires have never been theirs in the first place. Instead, Upon closer examination, they discover that these dreams and desires they have been walking around with for half a lifetime actually belong to their parents or to a few well-meaning individuals in their lives. Parents often hope that their children will grow up to fulfill certain roles or achieve certain goals that they have not managed to achieve in life. For example, a father who yearned to be a lawyer but did not will tend to impose this desire on his son. The son, wanting to please his father, may force himself through law school while finding very little joy and fulfillment in the process. Of course that would be the case. How can there be joy and fulfillment when we are not even living a life of our own? The reverse is often true as well. The father may be a successful lawyer who imposes these same standards on his son. The son, wanting to live up to the expectations of his father, may choose a career path that is completely out of alignment with his own true desires. Fortunately, many of our intentions and desires are simpler than that. We may desire a particular item because it makes us look successful in the eyes of others. If that's the case, then we are really wanting to use that item to control the perception of others and not for our own highest fulfillment. It therefore makes sense to drop these items from our wish list. Go through each item, intention on your list and ask yourself why you want it. Is it because of what someone else said? Did society implant the idea in your mind that it would be a nice thing to have? Do you believe that achieving it would make your parents proud and happy? This happens more often than we realize. When I went through my list of desires for the first time, I realized that more than half of the items on that list were not even mine to begin with. Somewhere along the way, society had given me the idea that owning a few of them would convince others that I had finally made it in life. What's even more amusing is that I actually manifested some of those items, without really knowing why I wanted them in the first place. It is perfectly alright to have an intention or desire if it is truly in line with what you want. For example, you may desire to own a grand piano because you truly love music and enjoy making beautiful music for others. You enjoy playing on the exquisite ivory keys and it makes your heart sing in joy while you do so. However, another person may desire a grand piano simply because it looks good in their living room and will impress their business associates who come over for a visit. The same item, but very different intentions. This is why we may often desire the same physical object but for very different reasons. Similarly. You may desire a luxury car because it feels so comfortable to drive in, with all the bells and whistles. It feels good to you while you are driving it. 
but another person may desire it to impress others. There are a few reasons why I advocate dropping these vicarious desires from your list. First, they would not bring you much enjoyment and happiness even if you achieved them. Second, these are often the desires that cause the most contradictions in your vibrations. A part of you wants them, yet another part of you is constantly struggling against them. These struggle and contradictory feelings will affect your inner state and the rest of your manifestations as well. Therefore, keeping these desires can jeopardize the rest of your manifestations. It is better that you gently identify and drop these desires to maintain an aligned inner state. Third, when you drop the desires that are not yours, you free up the much needed mental energy to concentrate on your remaining desires, those that are truly yours. You will find that the things you truly want come into your life very quickly once you have clarified and dropped these unnecessary desires that bog you down. I spent more than half of my life struggling with the desires that were not mine, simply because I was always worried about what others thought of me. This resulted in a huge waste of time and effort because it was only after the manifestation of those things that I realized I did not want them in the first place. I now had to deal with them or get rid of them through my physical actions. The feeling you get when you are free from the opinion and judgments of others is an incredibly empowering and light feeling. No words can adequately describe how this state feels like, and I encourage you to experience it firsthand for yourself. Once you have discovered this new way of living, you will never want to go back. Once your mind realizes that you can live independently from the judgments of others and still thrive. You will never subject yourself to those needless limitations and restrictions ever again. But you must take the first step, and it starts with letting go of those self-conscious feelings every chance you get. A natural consequence of doing this work is that you care less about what others think, and hence are not pressured to change your original intentions, desires in order to conform. All too often. Our desires take a long time to manifest because we keep changing them in response to the whims and fancies of others. An individual who is always worried about what others may think will not feel comfortable manifesting many of his intentions in life, especially those that involve material wealth. Hence, he is always downsizing or changing certain aspects of his desire to please others. For example, he may truly want a new house in a particular neighborhood, but then change that desire to a smaller house because that is more in line with what his siblings live in. Then he may move his desired house from a more expensive to a less expensive neighborhood in order to fit in. All of these are often imaginary responses to the projected thoughts and opinions of others. You have to become so comfortable with your own desires that whatever another person says acts cannot shake that intention. The intention is yours and belongs to you alone, so why let someone else change it? The constant shifting of your intentions to suit the opinions of others will only result in their delay and slipshod manifestations, because you are sending contradictory vibrations in so many different directions. Start putting this principle in practice in your life today, only change your intentions and desires if your preferences change, but never to suit the opinions and preferences of others. You cannot be living your life for another, and you can never please enough people in your life. Chapter 9, Today I am free from passing judgments. An amazing thing happens once you become free from the judgments and opinions of others. This change is subtle and barely noticeable at first, but becomes apparent to you as the weeks go by. This is something that happens spontaneously and does not have to be forced. It is a natural consequence of freeing yourself from the opinions and expectations of others, and it is this, 
When you feel less self-conscious about how others perceive you, you will naturally give up the need to judge, be critical about or pass negative remarks about others. The act of criticizing and passing judgment on others is so pervasive in our modern society that it often harms our manifestations without us even knowing it. This single act sabotages most of our efforts even before we start. Admittedly, this has been a difficult spiritual principle for me to follow. If you read the teachings of every great spiritual master throughout the ages, they have always spoken about the utmost importance of not judging or criticizing others. The most prominent of these teachings has been immortalized in a phrase by Jesus, judge not by appearances but by right judgment. But why have spiritual teachers throughout the ages taught this principle so steadfastly? Do they know something which the rest of the population does not? How does the act of criticizing others relate to our manifestations? Before I talk about the greater spiritual significance, let me first share my own personal experiences. I grew up in a family that thrived on criticism. My mom was a perfectionist who always held herself to high standard, and this form of perfectionist behavior applied to everything in the household as well. Everything within the house had to be done to the highest standards, and she was not afraid to let any of the family members have a piece of her mind when they stepped out of line. All of her children had to perform to the highest standards in school and in whatever they did. Can you imagine living under these circumstances during the most formative years of your life? I guess most of us can relate to that, as the experience leaves you with a judgmental and self-critical inner voice that accompanies you for the rest of your life. Most of us walk around with this inner critic without even questioning why it is there. The inner critic can sometimes be so nasty and harsh that it sabotages our efforts even before we begin. We can trace the origins of this inner critic to early authority figures in our lives. While these authority figures were well-meaning and had our good at heart, for example, they did not want us to do something that injured ourselves, the way they communicated their message was sometimes less than desirable. As a result, we accepted and internalized their repeated negative comments and judgments over time and started using them on ourselves. A baby does not know how to judge. To a baby who has just been born into this world and to young children, the world is so perfect. Everything is going so well despite the outer circumstances. Louise Hay used to teach that babies don't go around looking into mirrors thinking that their bodies are too fat. They're happy to have a body in the first place. That is the state of pure beingness we are going for here, the state of being happy unconditionally. To become unconditionally happy, you need to stop ascribing your happiness, or unhappiness, to external circumstances, which means that you have to stop your judgmental behavior. So why does this pure baby eventually learn to judge and pass negative comments about others? For one, he has learned it from his parents and teachers in life. Much of the instruction from our parents come in the form of negative criticisms and judgments, and over time a young child comes to accept this way of functioning as normal. Over time, a young child thinks it is alright to carry out such behavior in the real world as well. Some of us find fault like there is a price given for it. And that is exactly the way we have been unconsciously set up to function in the world. We derive an immense sense of perverse pleasure from pointing out what's wrong, because criticizing others creates a particular emotional state which we have become so familiar and addicted to. Think about how you feel when you pass a negative judgment or criticize another person. You do not feel good. It feels like some sort of a caustic and jumpy feeling within you. Yet most people willingly engage in this behavior for almost all their lives. Why is that so? 
because that caustic and intense feeling is one of the few feelings which they know and have come to associate so closely with their being. They have become addicted to that feeling of criticizing others, or the emotional response in their bodies when they do so. Over time, they gravitate towards people, events and experiences that give them more of that feeling. This is no different from taking drugs to get that temporary high because that high feeling from drugs is the only good feeling you know. But as all students of this material will know, there is no limit to how good you can feel. There is no limit to how intense those magic feelings, which I talk about in my book The Magic Feeling, can be. If you will learn how to access those feelings of immense inner peace, love and joy at will. Then you will never depend on any external substances to get high again. They will serve no purpose in your life. You would have discovered the most straightforward way to get there and stay there by your own accord, without having to depend on any external substance or circumstance. There is a secret payoff for criticizing others. It makes us feel good. It makes us feel that we are in the right and somehow better than the people we are criticizing. But how do you really feel when you pass judgments about others? Do you really feel good? Compare these supposed good feelings that you get to those of immense peace, love and joy. Are they the same? A simple comparison will tell you that they're not. In fact, they are opposing feelings on the emotional scale. The need to judge others is associated with many negative emotions on the emotional scale. For example, it is often associated with a sense of insecurity, guilt, unworthiness, which is one of the lowest vibrations on the emotional scale. Can you now see why judging others can sabotage your manifestations big time? Recall that the manifestation buck always stops with you. Therefore, it does not matter who or what you are criticizing. It does not matter who or what you are making those nasty jokes and comments about. All it matters is that you are making them, and therefore you have to bear the full consequences of these nasty remarks. The more time you make these remarks and pass these judgments in a day, the more you will have to bear their consequences in terms of delayed or even completely annulled manifestations. Are you willing to bear these consequences? When I first started becoming conscious of this aspect of my being, I was surprised at how many judgmental thoughts I spontaneously passed throughout the day. This does not mean that we are bad or evil people. It simply means that we have acted unconsciously up to this point in our lives. We have not really picked up and questioned our endless thoughts. Instead, we simply let our mind chatter run wild. When you start to examine the thoughts that naturally run through your mind, you will be surprised to discover that a lot of them tend to be of a negative nature. For example, you may see someone walking towards you on the street and pass a casual judgment about that person's appearance or dressing. To students of spirituality, this revelation can be quite unnerving. Here they are trying to speak and think positively and then discovering for the first time that their unconscious is throwing up all these nasty remarks and comments. If this sounds like what you are going through, the first thing you should do is to stop judging yourself for this behavior. Stop the endless loop of judgment and criticisms. The need to criticize others arises from being constantly critical of yourself. For example, if you always criticize yourself for not living up to certain standards in your life, similar flaws in other people will tend to become particularly obvious to you as well. In a way, we are projecting our own self-criticisms onto others and onto the world around us. What I have found is that negative comments about others often take up a huge chunk of our waking consciousness. When we are not critical about ourselves, we are often criticizing others. When you learn to drop the need to be critical, when you free yourself from the judgments of others and from judging others, 
you are free. You now walk around with the ultimate peace of mind, which means that your inner state is no longer contaminated with these nasty thoughts and vibrations about others. Another area to note is to avoid making nasty jokes about people, no matter how funny they may seem. Sometimes these jokes may make you the life of the party, or they may make you very popular amongst your friends. As a result, we engage in the mindless behavior of coming up with one nasty joke after another. This is another common manifestation pitfall. Think about someone who often makes nasty jokes about others, we all have one or two individuals like this in our social circle, or perhaps it may even be yourself, in your life. Now look at the results in their lives. Are they living what you would call a good life? Have all their desired manifestations come true for them in their reality? Are they happy with their lives? This should not come as a surprise. But I have done this simple observation exercise so many times and found that these folks who love to make nasty, mean jokes about others are the same ones who have many things to complain about in their own lives. Is it any wonder that their manifestations are not coming true for them? The habit of making nasty, mean jokes is a difficult one to overcome for a few reasons. First. It seemed like an utterly harmless activity. The person whom you are making the joke on does not even know it, and all of your friends, including yourself, get to enjoy a really good laugh. Second, it makes you popular and keeps you in good company. Everyone wants to be around the funny guy. Third, when someone tells a nasty joke, it lightens up the atmosphere and hey. We are all out to have a good time right? Here's where things start to go downhill. First, making mean jokes is not a harmless activity. It affects the person who makes them. That is probably the most straightforward way I can put it. Recall that the manifestation buck always stops with you. Each time you pass a nasty joke or comment, you bring up associated feelings of insecurity jealousy, envy or judgment. For yourself. This is precisely why the joke is so funny, because it is so inappropriate and mean. These go on to affect your inner state and your outer manifestations. So to put it bluntly, the joke is really on the person making the joke. Second, nasty comments are often funny. And anything funny is very easily absorbed by our subconscious with very little resistance. Our subconscious minds love humor. Third, our subconscious minds love repetition as well. When you keep making the same nasty comments over and over again, and keep laughing upon hearing them, it is deeply embedded in your unconscious and goes on to create your outer reality. Sometimes you may be around individuals who like to make nasty jokes and comments. It is also human nature to laugh along to any joke told to us. When I realized the full significance of the spiritual principle, I immediately made it a point to distance myself from individuals who constantly poked fun of others. For the few individuals whom I could not get away from, I made it a point to be honest with them. I told them, look, you have to stop making these mean jokes about people we encounter. It is disrespectful to them and affects you too. Of course, I did not go into a full spiritual explanation but they understood and changed their behavior thereafter. The need to pass judgment about others can be a sticking point for our manifestations. I often meet individuals who are thinking positively and doing all the right things, but still their manifestations are not happening for them. This is when we dig deeper and discover that their mind chatter is filled with critical thoughts about either themselves or others. Eliminate these critical thoughts, return your inner state to one of inner peace and your manifestations will come quickly for you. The next time you feel the urge to criticize or pass an unwarranted comment about another person, even if it is just on the inside, 
Pause for a moment and let that feeling go. Keep doing so until the feelings are gone, until you do not have the urge to dwell on that thought. Letting go of the need to criticize is exactly the same as letting go of our negative feelings of fear or worry. They are all just feelings caused by our unconscious beliefs, and a feeling can be easily let go of before it turns into an outward manifestation, the outwardly critical behavior. Chapter 10, Today I am free from guilt and addictions. The feelings of guilt and shame are one of the lowest on the emotional scale. Yet most people still immerse themselves in these feelings and carry it around with them all the time. In our society, these feelings are just not openly talked about. How do you even begin to talk about something that is making you feel guilty or shameful in the first place? That's why such feelings are often swept under the rug and denied, suppressed for the longest time. They often result in outer manifestations in the form of unwanted physical results and also physical addictions. Anyone who walks around with intense guilt and shameful feelings can never achieve manifestation success. I wish it could be another way, but I did not invent these universal laws and I'm merely telling you about them. If you wish to achieve lasting manifestation success, then you have to find a way to handle your guilt feelings. The techniques in this chapter will show you how. As I've mentioned repeatedly in the past, the actual content of your thoughts do not matter. The actual experience does not matter. Hence in moving forward today, we are not interested in why you came to have those guilty, shameful feelings and what caused them. All of them are in the past and are no longer relevant to us. What we are dealing with here are the present feelings themselves which are so negatively creative. Feelings of guilt and shame cause us to wither up on the inside, and eat at our emotional well-being. So long as we hold on to these feelings, we can never be totally free. There is an apartment saying which goes, we are not punished for our sins but by them. This feeling of guilt can be particularly insidious. Fortunately, there is an easy way out of all this. This is the path which I have discovered for myself and I hope it can help you as well. It is important to understand and see these feelings of guilt for what they really are. If you can understand the underlying emotional reasons for them, you'll be able to let them go very easily. When we hold on to guilt about anything, we perceive a situation as bad and ourselves as powerless to change it. This is an important definition so let's make sure you understand it, whenever we feel guilty about anything, we perceive that thing as bad but more importantly, we also believe that we are powerless to change our conditions. Which is why we have to keep feeling guilty over that thing. Guilt feelings are the most extreme way of judging yourself. Someone who is guilty is self-critical and punishing towards himself all the time, while believing that the rest of the world is passing the same judgment on him. Can you see the convoluted way through which the ego projects itself onto the world around us? We feel bad about something and blame ourselves for it. But we also project that blaming behavior onto the people around us and blame ourselves through them. These guilt feelings are nothing but the false belief that we are constantly being judged for our deeds. This projection is what causes most of the guilt feelings, independent of the actual actions and behaviors of others. If you have followed the steps in the previous chapters of this book, you may find that the guilt feelings which you have carried around for years have been spontaneously reduced, just from following the steps in the earlier chapters. This is a natural consequence of doing the inner work necessary. When you free yourself from those self-conscious feelings and from your fear of being judged, you will stop feeling as guilty about certain situations in your life because the judgments of others no longer affect you as much. As such, 
What we have done up to this point goes a long way in helping us overcome our residual feelings of guilt. When you feel guilty over something, your body often displays the same subtle physical signs that we talked about in Chapter 3. That is when you have to pause whatever you are doing, center yourself in your inner state and let those spontaneous feelings of guilt go. Dealing with our guilt feelings is the same as dealing with all our other feelings. Feelings are just energy running through our body, which can easily be released from our energetic systems. Therefore, resist the urge to label your feelings and to dwell in the emotional baggage that surrounds them. Just deal with the feelings in the present moment when they arise. You'll discover that if you stick to this practice of tending to your inner state in the present moment only, you would have solved a huge chunk of the perceived issues in your life. That's because now is the only moment there is. Now is the only moment we have to work with. And when something happens, it always happens now, now and now. Life is a series of now moments. The mistake so many people make is to try and deal with the past, present and future all at once. That is putting themselves through unnecessary agony and trouble because you can never change the past in the now, but you can change how you feel about the past in the now. And that is the whole secret of dealing with guilt. Many people are worried that they will start doing bad stuff if they do not feel guilty over certain things. This is a misplaced fear. I have realized that when you are in alignment with your highest self, you can do no wrong. When you come from a place of highest love and peace, then everything you do will be in accordance with the highest universal good. You will be acting from divine love and your divine beingness. The fear of doing bad things if we do not feel guilty results from a lack of understanding of these universal laws and from our past, faulty programming. A closer examination will reveal that it stems from our need to judge others. We wrongly believe that judgment and punishment is what is needed to keep our behaviors in line, when in fact, it is impossible to harm another or ourselves when we are aligned with our highest selves. If something undesired has happened in the past, resolve not to do it again and let the guilt go. It's as simple as that. You can deal with 20 years of guilt in just one afternoon using this technique. Simply resolve not to repeat that hurtful action again and then let all the guilt go. Chances are that you were not aligned with your highest self when you behaved in that way, but you now know better. You now know the power of alignment, so make full use of this knowledge. Give up the faulty, and needless, belief that you will repeat the behavior once you stop feeling guilty from it. If guilt over something is overwhelming you, it pays to spend one quiet afternoon by yourself working on the issue. Bring up the feelings of guilt. Feel the subtle physical signs in your body and then let those feelings of guilt go in the present moment. Continue to do this until you have let all the guilt go, or feel that it has diminished considerably. One afternoon is all you need to be free for the rest of your life, and I think that's a pretty good bargain. However, be prepared to repeat the process hundreds of times that afternoon each time checking in to see whether the feelings of guilt have diminished. Keep going at it until you feel better, until you reach that place of relief. The residual guilt will often resurface itself as you go about your day. What you should do when some of these residual feelings present themselves is to notice them in a moment, and then to let them go without any labeling or judgment. Don't say, here I am feeling guilty about this thing again. Instead say, I let this feeling go now and focus on getting yourself free from those guilt feelings in the present moment. Don't worry about how you are going to deal with it in the future. That's not something for you to worry about. Deal with it in the now moment. How do you feel about it now?
The only thing that matters is that you feel at peace with something in the present moment. Addictions are often related to guilt, in that addictive behavior makes us feel guilty. In the past, I have fallen prey to all sorts of addictive behavior that have affected my manifestations, but I was in denial about most of them. I believe that since I was doing so much positive thinking and good work on the outside, I could afford to indulge in these addictions and still have my good manifest for me. I have since realized that if you wish to achieve peace of mind and long-lasting manifestation success, then you need to find a way to deal with these addictions in your life. You need to become free from these addictions. Anytime you allow an external action, substance or circumstance to have power over you, you are not totally free. Your freedom to create will always be limited. I understand what an uphill battle it can be to deal with one's addictions, since we may have been holding on to them for our whole lives. Addictions can thus come with immense emotional baggage, and it is this emotional baggage that clouds our perception of them. Another unresourceful belief that we often hold is, I've had this addiction for so long. But how long you've had something does not equal the ease at which you can let it go. I can be holding onto my pen for the past few hours and sure enough, my fingers can become cramped from the grip. But that does not mean I cannot let it go if I wanted to. All it takes is a conscious decision to let go. I am not here to judge whether your addictions are right or wrong. Instead, I would like you to think about your addictions and whether they are ruling your life. Are they affecting your inner state? Are you thinking about them more lusting over them most of the time? Are you spending most of your time immersed in those feelings of lust and desire, for your addictions? I have found that addictions often come at a cost. While they may give us the temporary high, that high feeling is nothing compared to our feelings of alignment with the universe. The high feels good compared to all the other feelings we have known in our lives but it cannot be compared to the ultimate feeling of freedom and peace we get from just being. That's a key difference. Stop using your addictions as a way to get high. There is usually a payoff in terms of the guilt and all the negative feelings which you feel later. These negative feelings are going to affect your outer manifestations. You can skip all the addictive behavior and go right to the feelings of peace and well-being directly without any of the substances or undesired behaviors. If you do decide that your addictions are getting in the way of your manifestations, then the first step is to make a conscious decision to change it. Set a very light intention to change the situation and leave it at that. There is no need to use strong affirmations and statements when dealing with something that has a strong emotional charge. The second step is to work on your guilt feelings and drop all those judgmental, shameful feelings surrounding your addiction. Drop all these unwanted feelings that you have been carrying around with you on the inside about your behavior. Now this is the step that trips most people up because they do not do it persistently. They think they'll be able to do the first step and overcome their addictions overnight, which is often not the case. You also need to work at dropping the unwanted guilt feelings surrounding the addictive behavior. While this seems counterintuitive, Dropping your guilt feelings surrounding your addictions will in fact aid you in dropping your addictions, instead of reinforcing the addictive behavior. I would not impose a deadline when dealing with addictive behavior. This is because we have built them up and reinforced them over such long periods of time that it is unreasonable to demand that we drop them at once. Be easy and gentle with yourself. Work at slowly but gradually dropping the guilt feelings surrounding your addictive behavior. You may find these guilt feelings resurfacing for you, but that is because there are usually many dimensions and different aspects of the issue causing these feelings. 
The good news is that it will be easier for you to do so if you have followed all the steps in this book up to this point, because you would have dealt with a lot of the smaller related emotional issues. Therefore the later steps in this book build on the earlier steps. If you have trouble dropping your guilt feelings, then go back to the earlier chapters and work on dropping your self-conscious feelings in general. When you do that first, you free up more of your mental capacity to deal with the related emotional issues. If you are persistent at dropping your feelings of guilt surrounding your addictions, you will find a few things happening spontaneously. First, you will engage less in your addictive behavior without much conscious willpower or effort. You would do them less and less on your own. You would also find that you have less urge to engage in them. This is because you would have broken out of the negative blame cycle that so many people unknowingly put themselves in. By continually feeling guilty about something and then blaming themselves for it, they are perpetuating the blame cycle which makes them do more of the unwanted behavior. One cannot focus on something undesired and hope to push it away from their lives. Our focus on the addiction brings more of that addictive behavior to us. The right way is to shift our focus away from the behavior itself, which we perceive to be causing the problem, onto the negative feelings themselves. Let those associated guilt and shame feelings go. When you are free of those feelings, you would be largely free from your addictions. Some people find that they no longer have any urge to engage in their addictions once they drop all the feelings of guilt and blame surrounding their behavior. Others find that they engage in them less. Either way, that is still a breakthrough and a huge progress that some people do not even make in one lifetime. Congratulate yourself for it. The next step then is to deal with the urge to engage in that addictive behavior each time it comes up. Each time you have the urge or impulse to engage in that addictive behavior, gently let the feeling go following the techniques outlined in Chapter 3 of this book. Gently let that impulse go. The first few times you do so, or probably the first hundred times, you will still feel like doing it even after you have let some of that impulse go. If that's the case, you can go ahead and do it with less emotional baggage. The importance of taking a light touch cannot be overemphasized here. I picked up a copy of Alan Carr's book, The Easy Way to Stop Smoking, just to see what it was all about even though I am a non-smoker. I have heard all sorts of good things about Alan Carr's work, in particularly his technique to help smokers overcome their lifelong addiction. Alan Carr was a chain smoker himself who tried various techniques to quit smoking before coming up with his easy way which has since evolved into a series of best-selling books and clinics around the world. What I read resonated with what I had discovered. Mr. Carr's approach emphasized taking a light touch. Smokers were never told that they had to stop smoking at any particular time. They were never given a deadline or ultimatum. They were never inundated with how wrong or unhealthy it was to smoke, nor subjected to any of those conventional scare, guilt tactics. On the contrary, they were allowed to continue smoking while they were in the program. This is in line with the principles we have discussed here, when you remove the guilt and taboo surrounding your addictions, you have a much easier time getting free of them. Is there anything in your life which makes you feel guilty from time to time, or most of the time? If so, set a light intention to drop those guilt feelings right now. Resolve not to engage in particular behaviors, or addictions again and then free yourself by letting go of those guilt or shame feelings whenever they come up. If you are persistent at this, you find that your guilt feelings that constantly down you in negativity will crop up for you less and less. Until they finally cease to be an issue one day.
This will make a huge difference to your manifestations because your mental capacity is now freed up to focus on your positive, desired manifestations in your life. Today you are free. Chapter 11, Today I am free to create. Manifestations have never been about attracting more stuff into your life. Instead, the art of manifestation is about effectively letting go. How effective you are as a manifester will depend on how effectively you let go of your negative feelings of fear, worry, disappointment, regret, guilt or anger that spontaneously crop up for you. These negative feelings may surface at any time during our day, and so long as we allow ourselves to be taken in by them. We limit the good that comes to us. We would have fallen into the same trap that has tripped up so many. When we allow our focus to be mindlessly dictated by the myriad of people, things and events that pass us by, we are not free. We will forever be at the mercy of external circumstances and events which we have no control over. You become free the moment you free yourself from these external influences. It starts by realizing that the manifestation buck stops with you. No matter who or what you are feeling negative feelings towards, no matter how justified you feel about these feelings and how right you are. You are the only person that exists in your universe. In fact, you are the universe. This is why you must be willing to bear the full consequences of your thoughts and actions. Each negative thought which you have produces a corresponding feeling in your body, and those feelings dictate your inner state which ultimately result in your own physical reality. Therefore you are creating in every single moment whether you realize it or not. You are creating right now as you are reading this book. You are creating while you are in the shower. You are creating as long as you have the power to choose where to place your conscious attention and focus. This means that in each moment of your life, you are either positively or negatively creating. You are either moving closer towards your good, or further and further away from it. Knowing which direction you are moving towards in each moment of your life is key, as it will clue you into the general direction which your life is moving towards. If you find yourself steeped in negative thoughts and emotions most of the time, then you are creating negatively most of the time. Correspondingly, you can expect very little good to come into your life. This is universal law. Who is the person who chooses what to focus upon in the first place? Who is the only person in the world who has the sole authority to decide? It may, or may not, surprise you to know that this person is you. You are the only person who can decide where to place your conscious attention and focus upon, thereby you are the only person in this whole wide world who can alter and dictate your own reality. Knowing this is the ultimate freedom. But why do so many people not exercise their authority as ultimate creators? Why do so many people allow themselves to be carried away by their feelings of anger, fear or worries? That's because they have not trained themselves to achieve mastery over their inner states. Over time, they have allowed themselves, and their focus, to be led wherever the mind goes much like a curious child following every single path that is presented to him. The untrained mind is like that curious child, it follows every single thought that is presented to it, without really questioning whether the thought will lead to more inner peace or more suffering. If you blindly follow and by whatever comes up for you, then you will always perpetuate the same reality. Let's say someone does something that makes you angry. The untrained mind allows itself to focus there, because that is what catches its attention in the moment. The untrained mind also allows itself to stew in the feelings of anger, and hence produce more and more unwanted manifestations. The trained mind realizes that it always has a choice. Remember, 
You always have a choice no matter what the circumstances are. You always have a choice on where and what to focus upon. Yes, it is true that this incident in your life, or even many incidents in your life, are making you angry. Yes, it is also true that this incident is so preposterous, big and in your face that it may be impossible to ignore. But despite all of that, you always have a choice of what to place your conscious attention on in the sanctuary of your own mind. Even if there are thousands of things to be unhappy about in your life right now, there is still at least one thing that makes you happy and smile when you think about it. Focus your attention wholeheartedly and exclusively on that one thing. Make it your world. Focus on it all the time to the exclusion of everything else. When you focus on that one thing, it becomes your universe and your inner state changes considerably. You move from negatively creating to positively creating, and soon your outer reality, no matter how dire, must change. This is the ultimate universal law. I remember the early days of my journey when I had so many things to be unhappy and depressed about. My untrained mind focused on one depressing thought after another, like a child's attention endlessly captivated by smoke and mirrors. As a result I was almost driven to the edge of depression and suicide. The solution for me back then was so simple and obvious that I could not see it. It is the same for us no matter where we are in our lives. If I could only find one small thing back then to focus upon to the exclusion of everything else, if I could make that my world for a sufficient time, my world would change in an instant. No matter where you are right now, there is always that one small thing which you can start focusing on right now. I'm willing to wager that there is not just one thing but quite possibly hundreds of things to be happy about in your life this very moment. But you need to train yourself to deliberately look out for them. When we have been conditioned by life over and over again to find fault, to look out for what's wrong and to be judgmental, it can be difficult to see the endless magic that lies all around us. But the magic is there. It has always been there since the beginning of time. It is our job to find it and focus solely on it. This is a skill that can be cultivated over time, and those who achieve this form of inner mastery eventually achieve lasting manifestation success. It starts with placing your well-being above everything else. When you understand that you create in the vibrational likeness of whatever you focus upon, and that only you have the power to control this focus, you understand the immense freedom you have always had. Today you are free, free from the clutches and control of others, free from external circumstances, free from the judgments of others. No matter how others decide to control, perceive or treat you, you can always be free by deliberately choosing to focus on something else in the privacy of your own mind. You have the sanctuary of your own mind, your own inner state, to return to no matter what happens on the outside. This is why you have always been free. Most people just do not realize the freedom that is theirs from the beginning. This freedom can never be taken away from you. It is your birthright. Imagine telling all your concerns and worries to the universe. Imagine letting the universe know about your deepest fears and struggles in life. What do you think the universe would say? How do you think the universe would respond? Would it say, yes, I sympathize with you and you are having a very hard time indeed? Or would it say, my dear, I do not see where the problem is? For a person who is trapped by their own thinking, this second response can indeed frustrate them to no end. In the early days of my graduate studies, I was fortunate to have the guidance of an eminent senior colleague who was at the forefront of his field. What was little known and special about my advisor was that besides being very brilliant and technically competent, he was also a spiritually enlightened person. 
He had achieved such mastery over his inner state that he was beyond all politics and petty behaviors at the workplace. He was imperturbable, which is why he made such great contributions to his field. His mental focus wasn't wasted on anything else. When colleagues complained about office politics or other forms of bad behavior to him, his response was always similar to what the universe would give. He did not even perceive the problem in the first place. He had risen above all of them. Up till that point in my life, I never thought it would be possible for a fellow human being to function at that level. I had heard the saying, God is too pure to perceive any iniquity, wrongdoing, but did not really know what it meant. Does it mean that God knows about all the wrongdoings in the world but chooses to turn a blind eye to them? Or does it mean that to God, all these problems, issues and limitations do not even exist in the first place? After observing my advisor over the period of a few years, I came to the realization that the second statement is true. One who has achieved mastery over his inner state does not even perceive any of the obstacles or limitations to be there in the first place. My advisor understood that how people chose to behave was up to them, and he did not perceive a problem with their behavior even if they were directed at him. He knew that no matter how they acted, he could not be affected or influenced by them. For he had full control over his inner state at all times. He freed them from his own expectations unconditionally. It is the same for you as well. The universe is too pure to perceive any form of iniquity. To the universe, all of your concerns and worries which you spend most of your time immersed in are petty concerns. They matter to no one else but you. They are petty not because they are unimportant, but because they have never been yours to solve in the first place. So stop convincing the universe that you have those problems by dwelling on them. Focus on something else. It is not your job to figure out how to overcome those obstacles and barriers. Your job is simply to focus on the things that make you feel happy and good. In the moment you do, you drop all your negative contradictory feelings and the universe fills in the rest effortlessly. This is why manifestation is not about attracting more stuff. There is nothing more for us to attract into our lives. Everything that we need, want and more is already here. We just have to let go of everything else so we can see the good that has been here all along. Give up all of your petty concerns and worries. Let the universe take care of them. Return to your original peaceful inner state which is your natural state, and stay there long enough until changes happen in your outer circumstances. The realization that you are free, and have been free all along, is such an delicious epiphany. You are free whether you know it or not, whether you live it or not. Your freedom cannot be taken away from you, but you can choose to deny yourself of it by believing in the alternative. That's how much power and freedom you have, to choose and have suffering if you wanted to. But why live that way? Why squander the universal flow of creative energy that is always available to you in every moment? Today you are free to create whatever you want. What would you like to create in your reality today? You should know that everything is available to you within the boundaries of our space-time reality. If you can desire it, you can create it. If you can desire it and focus on it purely, then you can manifest it in your physical experience even faster. Stop worrying about the petty concerns and opinions of others and how they will feel about your manifestations. The opinions, thoughts of others have never mattered in the first place simply because whatever they do, think or say think can never affect our manifestations. Dr. Seuss puts this across eloquently when he wrote, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. May I add that when it comes to your own manifestations, 
no one else matters but yourself, not even your parents, spouse and those closest to you. But are you able to free yourself from the expectations of them? Today you are free to manifest whatever you want. Start by feeling less self-conscious about what others think of you and more conscious about how you feel on the inside. Start by worrying less about whether you are doing things right and focusing more on whether you are feeling right. Start by worrying less about whether the universe can fulfill your desires, it always can, and place your attention more upon what you would like to create with the help of the universe. Today I am free is not just a feeling or a positive statement you walk around with. It is the ultimate recognition and acceptance of an eternal universal truth. You have always been free, are free now and will always be. When you accept this truth and live it, there is nothing more you have to do, for before you ask, the universe would have answered.